Good evening, everybody. This is AWSC, America's weather streaming channel here with a quick little update. Um, my name is Kiefer McKenna, and I am the leader or the meteorologist in New Jersey, as well as we have Brandon Adams, um, Ian Anderson, and Mike, Mike Carmen. Um, so these guys were all, you know, part of the Northeast group here as such. So we're just here to give you guys a little, uh, excuse me, a little uh, bit of an update on our or, uh, system approaching the Northeast overnight tonight. So today in New Jersey, it's looking like a little bit more of a rain. Uh, we're not expecting any too, too much of snow uh, since the temperatures are a little warmer than uh, that has to be for snowfall to, you know, to, to be. So, um, but as long as it is a little colder, like up north, uh, more New York is getting some snow. Pennsylvania is expecting some snow as well as uh, New Hampshire and Maine and Vermont. So taking it from there, um, New York, Brandon, right? You have New York? No, or no, Ian? no, I have New York. Yeah, right, Ian, you got New York. All right, so I'm going to pass it over to Ian for a little bit right here. Uh, he's going to talk about what's going on in his state. All right, so New York's really getting a mix of outcomes here. Um, it's, it's getting the full force of this local pressure system. Uh, I wanted to show if I could share my screen. Am I allowed to share my screen? Yeah, let me see if you're allowed to on here. You got any? Yeah, I might have to allow it. Hold on one second. All participants. All right, go ahead. Try it again. Um, I want to share this one. There we go. Okay. Uh, just pulling up, uh, I, we got some camera feeds here from the New York State Mesonet. Uh, they have weather stations set up all over the state. This is in uh, the Adirondacks in Newcomb, New York. Uh, it's like a 24-hour loop from, or excuse me, a 12-hour loop from about 8 a.m. this morning to 8 p.m. So right about now, and you can see already there's snow accumulating there with uh, they got the they got the snow stick out there. It's about up to about three inches wow. as of about eight p.m. I want to just loop through one more time. Ian, is that is that sorry to interrupt, but is that uh, what is that scale? Is that a, is that like one two one feet two feet? Oh three? yeah, yeah, that's feet. Yeah. Okay, All right. so yeah, every every word changes like orange to gray. That's like three inches. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So you know, I mean, as not not too crazy that the Adirondack Mountains are accumulating snow already. Um, so uh, just looking at tropical pivots now, this is the uh, the NAM about 18Z today. Uh, and this is pretty much right now, you can see there's a huge mix of precipitation coming through the state. Um, lots of rain out in Western New York, although they got a taste of some of this wintry mix uh, earlier. And then uh, the Adirondacks are really seeing a lot of uh, sleet, freezing rain, and some sunny snow there. Uh, I made a quick if of it because you can see uh, as this thing has kind of passed through and this goes into the future a little bit here, it's really uh, all this wintry precipitation has really been triggered with the higher elevation. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of the rain is really staying at the lower elevations. Uh, I wanted to show... It looks like it's been a fast moving storm because I know it looks like, you know, yeah, sure. southern southern part of New York experience some mixing a little bit before around uh two three o'clock this afternoon and mm -hmm. it's already almost passed through you know five six hours later so it does look like it's a pretty fast moving storm i noticed that too especially when we were trying to look at this thing last week and it just kept mm -hmm. trying to go earlier and earlier because originally it was going to be like tomorrow night correct yeah and through right now um uh, another thing I noticed too with it is you can kind of see there's like a dry slot that comes in here on the back side. And I, I went and looked at the uh, the water vapor and you can really see that dry slot here. And it's really right. just 
classic worm conveyor belt, sending all that precip up this way. Mm -hmm. Um, the WPC, honestly, I don't know how much I agree with this analysis, just because there is there's a lot of cold air dam in there, but I feel like this front here, this warmer front, it this warm front is pushing north a lot faster than they're showing it here. Yeah. Uh, yeah I can definitely see that from here as well. Uh how what is um this one? So this is from 21 Z. Yeah. Yep. All right. This is the most recent one here. All right. So yeah, 21 Z is was that eight? No. What time is 21 Z? Uh 21 Z is <laughs> quizzing me now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> a little quick uh quick little recap on how to convert um, yeah, a Z time to UTC time and then you'd convert it back to Eastern time. It's like late afternoon or early evening. Okay. Yeah, it's four four o'clock Eastern. Uh it's right. four o'clock Eastern, yeah. Yeah, so that looks like the latest model run. So yeah, so th that is four four o'clock Eastern, or was that right? Okay, okay. Yeah, I could definitely see that because it looks like more of the warmer air. Because mm -hmm. I know on the Jersey Shore, uh, we got basically uh, upper fifties today as a high, and it quickly dropped after like six seven o'clock um, to about uh, you know lower forties. So, I mean, we, we're still in that warm sector, that front, you know, so as it pushes kind of northwards, you know, we're expecting more uh, of a wind switch as well. So anything from, you know, we're, we were getting more south winds, but we're going to expect, you know, a lot cooler air. Coming right. behind, the, behind the system is supposed to be really breezy, I know. Yeah. Um, also looking at, um, or going back to this here that I made. Um, of course, like, you know, at higher elevations, you're going to want to be aware of like that wintery mix and that snow overnight. But um, also coming through down in like New York City area, Long Island, there's a lot of heavy rain. Um, which like norm normally you might not expect that because I mean, going back to this, you can see the system's pretty occluded already. So normally it would start to weaken. Uh, but if you look here at, oh, sorry. If you look at the 250 millibar wind going forward, um, we're down, downstream of the trough here. It's really allowing the system to re-intensify into the into a new low that we saw coming off the coast last week. Right. Um, and the, there's even a little bit of coupling here going on. Uh, so that, that's really going to let that heavy rain develop over the New York City area. And that, I mean, obviously that can be dangerous. We saw earlier this year in like places like Brooklyn, Queens, what the flooding did in just, what was that, one day. You had cars halfway buried in water you had subways flooding so yeah I, I do i do remember that system that was only like a not even a few months ago i think it was you know I, I just late December. I came through mm -hmm. and i was like wow what a greeting <laughs> yeah well, reminds but, me of uh hurricane sandy a little bit you know how we got because you know jersey shore got it too but i remember seeing pictures of new york city and you know, the subway stations being totally underwater and uh like I said, you can't really count any of these storms out for that, um, especially especially in the city because you got you get yeah. everything paved over. There's not a lot of great drainage, so if you get, I mean, if your rainfall rates are high enough, it doesn't even have to be that much total rain, but it'll it'll do the damage, you know. Especially right, yeah. with, I mean, obviously the high population, lots of public traveling, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, especially this weekend too. You know, a lot of people are coming down. Uh, you know, using the train systems, NJ Transit and stuff like that and Long Island Railroad for mm -hmm. uh, to visit friends and family for sure. Um, so do you think there would be any uh, delays with that or? Uh, look, if it stays the way it looks like now, I think definitely uh, with that moderate heavy rainfall, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a lot of delays on flights and things like that. I don't think... Uh, I don't think it would affect things like Amtrak, MTA, stuff like that. But I mean, even just a few weeks ago, there was a mudslide that went over the rails. So um, that was probably, and it was probably weakened from that rainfall. So I know it, it uh, threw a wrench into my plans. I had to take a, I had to figure out a new way to get back down here. But I think you, that can definitely be expected. And if you can put off traveling 
until like Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, once the most of this has passed through, it'd probably be better. Yeah. So anyone that's really listening to this or watching this, yeah, definitely um advise if you have to travel, you know, during the day, definitely try to hold back on it. Try to maybe travel towards later at like late afternoon, uh early evening, as you were saying, as the storm passes through. Um same thing with the with central jersey uh, i'm watching this chart right now in front of me and it, like you said it's it's passing through wednesday early mm -hmm. morning into basically you know 13z is is getting there you know closer to during the day um so as that system does pass off uh later afternoon tomorrow is probably your better bet of traveling if you have to visit friends and family for thanksgiving um it's almost a good thing that this came through earlier because if it was yeah if it was coming through wednesday night and you, you know you wouldn't really have the option you'd be kind of you'd either have to leave early but i mean you know with people trying to get off work and stuff like that it's better that it just comes through now and then you can kind of wait till wednesday correct yeah so um i know some of the roads in, uh, in New Jersey, like the Parkway, uh, I-95, Turnpike, stuff like that, uh, and in uh, eastern Pennsylvania as well, uh, I-78, I-80 right now. Currently, all those roads are uh, basically a 25-mile-an-hour drive almost the entire way um, since we're getting most of that rain mixing, or rain and mixture right now. So definitely I would be careful if you're on those roads right now, uh, just to maybe try to reroute or um, not travel at all tonight mm -hmm. if you have to. Definitely wait until, like I said, later afternoon. Um, so with the timing of that storm, but I guess we could move up more towards uh, New Hampshire, Boston area. Um, I'll, I'll stop my share here. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, so I don't know, Mike, if you want to, kind of talk about that a little bit what's going on in your neck of the woods yeah <clears throat> excuse me absolutely thanks thanks Kiefer um yeah for for up here in New England um definitely looking a little bit more a little bit more wintry um we're going to be on the wintry side of this of this system which is exciting for us um we do love our snow up here in in New England um yeah, and, and probably our first real significant kind of plowable snowfall. Um, it looked like it was going to be a little bit more of a widespread snowfall event a few days ago, um, but that warm air is, is definitely intruding maybe a little bit further north um, in the latest sort of model runs there. So um, still a pretty decent snowfall event for the mountains up here and sort of the northern half of, of northern New England. Um, but definitely, like you mentioned, down towards now looks like down towards Boston and whatnot, probably mostly rain event, um, certainly some heavy rain, some gusty winds. And I think that could certainly affect travel um, at a, in and out of Logan Airport, you know, tomorrow. Absolutely. And, and Manchester Airport as well. So certainly, you know, I think some delays would not be out of the question there. Uh, but further north up here in in the mountains, especially. Um, I'll go ahead and share my screen and show a couple different a uh, couple different things here. Um, first off, um, you know, sort of current radar, and uh, yeah, right now, um, at least outside my window um, in in Bartlett, New Hampshire, this nothing nothing's hitting the ground as of yet. Um, but I think that's going to change pretty quickly here. Uh, it was a really cold night in northern New Hampshire, or coldest night, um, actually, probably across most of northern New England. In fact. Um, you know, sort of our coldest night of the season so far, some places getting down into the single digits for the first time. Um, so a lot of good cold air sort of in place at the surface, um, but also very dry. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time for the snow to start actually reaching the ground. But when it does, I mean, there's with some of the maps, obviously, that um, Ian was showing there, um, there's a lot of moisture with the system. So I think it's going to be no problem for the snow to start sort of reaching the ground there. Um, any time now, you know, it's about 830 at the moment. So I would imagine snow is going to start, start falling, um, throughout most of the state here pretty quickly. Um, we'll move on to, um, another map here as well and sort of focus on, um, the timing again. And it looks like, again, a lot of the snow, um, while well, a lot of the wintry precipitation across New Hampshire is, is going to fall mostly during the overnight hours. 
Um, so it's one of those situations where you'll go to bed and there'll be nothing on the ground and then you'll wake up in the morning, maybe hoping to travel for your you know Thanksgiving uh, plans and there could be six inches of snow on the ground um, and still falling. So definitely something to expect across most of northern New England to wake up to a very different scene um, than you went to bed with, essentially. Um, yeah, so, you know, looking at this map here, this is hour by hour precipitation. And again, some of those darker blues indicate some of the heavier snowfall. Um, and obviously the green is, is that rainfall. So, so those darker colors really come in, you know, about, you know, 3, 4, or 5 a.m., something like that. So that's really when the snow, heaviest of snow is likely gonna fall. Um, and then even looks like there's a little bit of a resurgence in that moisture right around sunrise too. Um, and those, those snowfall rates start to go up a little bit. So do you think there will be any school closures or anything like that tomorrow for you guys or? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And that's, it's an interesting one, especially in, in New Hampshire, because, um, you know, the, the bar for snow days is, is a little bit higher around here than say in, in New Jersey. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I would imagine there, there would likely be these a, delays, right? At least some delays, um, up here, I would imagine. Um, yeah, it's interesting too, because a lot of schools do, because it's the day before Thanksgiving, you have an early dismissal. They already have a half day. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Some may just cancel outright, um, just because of the nature of the travel and whatnot. So definitely curious to see what, what happens. That's a, that's a great point. Um, the timing, uh, yeah, is going to be really tricky for for schools. And again, usually with the first big storm of the season like this anywhere, even in New Hampshire and Maine, where we're used to the snow, it takes a little bit of time for those road clearing systems to get dusted off and as efficient as they are midwinter. So I feel like usually those first couple storms like this, the roads don't get clear quite as quickly um, early in the morning as they will you know, because they haven't really gotten into their routine yet, but we'll see. Depends um, where you are up there, too. I've spent two years in Plymouth, and my roads were, I, I had to rely on the neighbor to plow it. If you decided not to plow the road that day, it wasn't plowed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that, that that's a good point. I, I have that, I do have that issue occasionally um, with, I have a long gravel driveway mm. uh, that I have a, a contractor come and plow, and um, hopefully he's here by the time I have to leave for work in the morning. Uh, if he's not, Sometimes I got to take out my shovel and, and do it myself. That's just part of the fun of living, <laughs> living in New England. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other, other map here I wanted to, to talk about was um, this, this shows uh, one hour snowfall rates um, during the night. And basically the, the more you get towards those darker blues and greens, the higher the, the snowfall rate and anything that's green is an inch per hour or greater and inch per hour grader is usually, you know, sort of considered a, a, a important delineation for like really heavy snowfall, reduced visibility, um, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, certainly between say the 1 a.m. and, you know, 6 to 7 a.m. hour, you can see some of those greens do sort of pop up um, across, you know, uh, central or kind of south central Vermont there. And then, you know, closer to sunrise across, you know, most of central New Hampshire, the lakes region, the White Mountains. Um, so, you know, some of the models are, are hinting at snowfall rates, not for too long of a time, but snowfall rates of over an inch per hour. Um, so that could very easily, you know, drop a, a few quick, you know, inches to, to wrap the storm up here. So that's certainly something to keep in mind if you are traveling um, one inch per, you know, one inch per hour snowfall rates are not something you necessarily want to want to drive in. And then finally, these are sort of um, anticipated total, uh, total snowfall accumulations by the National Weather Service. Um, and you can see some of the highest amounts are really um, on the order of six to eight, even 10 inches, mostly in the mountains, and a pretty steep gradient drop off as you go towards the coast with that warmer air mixing in. So, you know, Boston, um, Portland, Maine, probably not going to see much, much snowfall out of this. Um, you know, so really reserved for the, for the mountains up here. Awesome, Mike. Well, uh, Brandon, you want to talk about a little bit of what's going on in your neck of the woods in, uh, in Maine? I should have just told uh, Mike to leave that page up because that was actually a really good uh, snowfall total to kind of explain what's going on. 
Yeah, it was. Um, Unless you want to share your own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll make it fairly brief because we actually only have about four minutes left in the meeting before it closes. Uh, so, so um, basically, as everyone else talked about, we're definitely watching the storm system develop here overnight. Um, personally, I feel, especially in Maine anyway, we're edging probably a little bit on the cooler side than that was forecasted. But we're keeping a close eye on that. Um, the Bangor region, which is where I am, we're only expecting maybe a half an inch or so. I really could see up to an inch and a half, maybe two inches on the high end, but uh, that would be really fortunate. Um, but as Mike was showing, just north of us, up uh, up in the Caribou area, especially up the up in the county, they're expecting four to six or so. You get into like the Presque Isle area, you're getting closer to the six to eight sweet spot. And uh, Mount Katahdin is probably going to be the winner here of the storm, maybe as a whole, uh, as probably a foot, foot and a half of snow with this event. So a solid beginning snowstorm for the season here. I was going to say, so it's not, it's not a very significant storm, but it's, it's basically a good first storm of the year, right? It's not, yeah. it's not one of these winter storms that we kind of got to really not worry about, but it's, it's just like an average you know snowstorm so yeah i i mean this is this is the typical beginning of the season snowstorm okay. especially in northern new england i mean you're looking at elevation dependency across the board no matter what state you're in and and that's especially true for like vermont especially vermont and the main coastline obviously um elevation is playing a huge factor there the champlain valley expecting quite a bit less snow out in vermont than you know the spine of the greens mm -hmm. and then you get to the connecticut river valley and it's the same thing on that side and shadowing from from the whites out in new hampshire so it's definitely something to keep an eye on it's it is just elevation dependency for this time of year a couple degrees here or there makes a difference in a forecast of zero inches of snow or four inches of snow um, and obviously again one or two degrees makes that difference it's hard to forecast sometimes so there's obviously some uncertainty in that I want to express that obviously with every with every storm. Um, this one fairly locked in, I would say, especially the 95 corridor. If you're east of 95 or south of 95, if you want to count 95 as traveling east to west in Maine, which it doesn't really, but it kind of does. Mm -hmm. um, if you're if you're south of that line, you're really not seeing much of anything, if anything. Um, maybe a coating, particularly on the cold grassy areas like mulch and bare dirt maybe even not even in the grass um it's kind of an interesting scenario because we were in the low teens for the most part across the state this morning and it warmed up rather quickly uh we gained like 12 degrees in like two hours <laughs> once that sun popped up this morning and it, just, before, man. it yeah. has not recovered since then to get back down so i'm really interested in the bangor area but travel wise in terms of the state of maine you're, you're looking at basic impacts that that we normally see you know take your time leave leave space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing just be safe on the road don't put yourself at risk don't put others at risk leave some extra time leave some extra space correct yeah and that's that's what any state you know that's not just with snow and stuff like that but that's what this entire system so but well thank you guys so much we uh we definitely appreciate you being on here and uh, definitely follow AWSC America's Weather Streaming Channel on YouTube for more content just like this. Um, we're going to try to cover at least every storm or, uh, at, yeah, at least every significant storm here in the Northeast. So uh, if you guys like our content, please definitely give us a follow and a like as well. Um, and then if you can go on Facebook and and like each individual state or whatever state you're in, that would be awesome as well and greatly appreciated. But Thank you guys so much for watching and we are America's weather streaming channel. Keith from McKenna meteorologist signing off here.